Hey everyone! Hey, it's Dr. Susan Pierce Thompson. Click here for sound. If you want to be able to hear, you got to click on the picture so you can hear. I'm here with Denny Hill. Hi, Denny. Thank you for joining us. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Hi. So welcome everyone. Um, this is, I don't know, the fifth or sixth or something uh, Facebook Live interview that we've done. And Denny Hill was on The Biggest Loser several years ago. She actually won the At Home Challenge for The Biggest Loser. Denny, was it 2010? It was 2011. 2011. Our, the our, our season started on actually the month of my 60th birthday. Oh, was, wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. And she now does Bright Line Eating. So she's going to tell us about her journey. So post down below. We want to hear from you. Post in the comments. Let us know you're here. Give Denny some love. It takes always a lot of courage to do these, and she's, she's just going to be great. Uh, it's so exciting to have you, Denny. And we're going to just go through your story. I want to hear your journey before The Biggest Loser and what it was like on that show and since. We've got all kinds of questions for you. And if you out there have a question for Denny, be sure to put it in the comments, and we will do some Q&A with you as well. So, all right, Denny, welcome, welcome, okay. welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to tell you, tell my story because it's been a long journey, a long journey. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah, <laughs> long, 60 we years. Have, take us back to the beginning. Where does it start? Okay, so um, I grew up in Southern California. Uh, my dad was a Hollywood writer, um, but he was also bipolar, and my mom, to deal with him, it became an alcoholic. So I grew up with addiction. He tried to cover his uh, bipolar by drinking. So it was a kind of a crazy childhood. We moved a lot. Uh, a lot of time was spent with my cousins. There were nine of them, or five of us. And so there are 14 kids all together. You sit down at the dinner table. Um, we'd sit down at this big, long table. And boy, they'd say, uh, you know, they're a good Catholic family. They would say the prayer, and everybody dove in. If you weren't fast enough, you lose. You didn't get the <laughs> so, I mean, You had to, to be quick to get enough to eat. Exactly. So you learned to shovel it in, basically. Shovel exactly. it in. And, and that's what it, it really was. It was shovel it in or, or lose. So yeah. um, anyway, so periods of, of that. And then um, very shy. I grew up, I was very, very shy because I was always going to new schools. Um, it was, um, I, I think I'm a kind of the kind of perfectionist that if I can't do it perfectly, you know, it's better to not do it at all than to fail. Is what I felt about myself, you know, uh, real low self-esteem. Um, I uh, got married, uh, had eight kids. And Did you say eight kids? Eight. I have six eight. daughters. Six, eight. Mm -hmm. And 24 grandchildren. I have 24 grandchildren. So, wow. <laughs> busy life. But I struggle with my weight my whole life. In fact, on my Facebook page, my daughter recently, she did a video for me and she posted it. And in all, the, and it was beautiful. It was because I, you know, sometimes you feel, did I do anything good <laughs> in my life? Well, my eight kids are just amazing. Also struggle with addiction. Also have been greatly helped by bright light eating. Um, but so, but all of the pictures, I was heavy, and I was always living in the past or the future. When I get thin, I will be the person that I know I can be. When I you know, or, oh, I wish I'd done things this differently. So I, I didn't live in the moment. I spent so much of my, of my life, you know, in the future, when I, and in the past. So anyway, you can't, you can't imagine, I mean, you can imagine, I'm sure so many of you out there have been on all, every diet you can think of. Craziness, I even have a lap band. What I discovered with the lap band was that the good for you foods get stuck and, uh, like broccoli and carrots and you know healthy foods, but the ones that go down easy are all of the. I can eat popcorn. I can eat all of the junk food. I could eat yeah. with no problem. Yeah. So you lose an addition. You know the the, the first yeah. fifty pounds, and then slowly started going back up. Yeah. So. Wait, how much did you lose with the lap band? Did you say fifty pounds? I only lost about fifty pounds. Only and about. Then 50 I started. Pounds. Yeah, my top weight was about two seventy. Okay. Um, you. And then, um, I mean, every, I did HCG five times after the lap band. That's craziness. Wow. I, you know, I know how, I mean, I've always known how to lose weight, but as soon as I got down to 
a decent weight, I would just go right back up, never thinking about it as being an addiction. Yeah. And um, so anyways, I, I, um, so I watched, I used to watch Biggest Loser and I would sit there and cry and I would, on commercials, I'd go get ice cream and I'd eat the ice cream and I'd cry. I thought, oh, that's, that's, that would be so awesome to be able to go on that show. Well, I have, you know, my daughters, six daughters. And so, and some of them have really struggled with their weight. And um, so my one daughter went to uh, try it out. It, it came to Salt Lake City and they she tried out. She was in, in the end of a 1500 person line. She's got a darling personality and she made it all onto season 10, all the way to the very end. They were going to call her back. They called her and they said, we've decided to go with someone else. Oh. She was devastated. So anyway, she, um, they called her back for season 11 and it was couples. And they said, who can you bring with you to try out? And I'm in the background. I happened to be there at the time and I'm in the background raising my hand saying, me, me, I'll go with you. Little did I know what I was getting myself into. Wow. But we did the process, the whole, but went to Hollywood week. We got on the show. And I remember that first going, uh, walking down a path to our very first um, workout uh, that was filmed, of course, and thinking, I felt like I was on a roller coaster. It was going up and it, and it was going to drop. And oh my goodness, it, it was, uh, it was, really brutal it was really brutal we honestly exercised from eight to 12 hours a day you had to get your your calories in it's all calories in calories out um the dr hyzang on the show he was great he did all the testing he said don't go under 1200 calories i think mine for me it was like 1190 something he said don't listen to the trainers because they'll take you down lower well some of those girls went down to 800 calories burning 5,000 calories a day and upwards up till their body shut down and wouldn't lose anymore. Yeah. It, it was, it was so, it was so hard to watch. Um, so I lost about in the, well, <laughs> my daughter and I, I mean, she said the worst thing was mom was listening to you try to turn over at night because we were so sore the first few weeks and just, uh, 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 you know, trying to turn over in bed. And she said, it just made her so sad to listen to me try to turn over. Um, I couldn't get off the floor when, you know, we sat the first day we were all sitting on a gym floor. Everybody got up and left. I had to crawl to the corner to, and pull myself up on the wall. I mean, it was, it was really hard. Um, I did get to be in the best condition of my life in the end, but, but the process was, was just grueling. And I know it was so hard on my body. Um, How many months was but, that that you were working out like that? I, it was seven months. Uh, I was I kicked know. off after like six or seven episodes and then the people at home compete. Um, luckily, and I, I was, I never dropped my calories under 1200. I never did. And, um, and I consistently, consistently lost two to three pounds a week, but I had exercise induced, induced anxiety so bad that I, I mean, to just go into the gym, I would, my, it, it was, I just, it was really hard. Usually, you know, the endorphins, they say, oh, exercise makes you feel so good. It terrified me because mm. of how hard it, it was. Yeah, so, um, it's a real thing. Overtraining is super hard on the body. Have you, did you see the article that came out um, a couple years ago, two, three years ago about the biggest loser? Did you see that? So they I took sure three, did. season six participants, right? And there were 14 of them. And this was six mm -hmm. years later. And so 13 of 14 of them had regained the weight. One had kept it off and even a little more. Um, and uh, of the people who'd regained the weight, what was really interesting is their metabolisms had really shut down. Like they were burning 500 fewer calories than they should have burned at the size that they were at presently. But that's even after six years had gone by and they'd already regained the weight. So like permanent metabolic damage. Per you could like... And what was horrible is in the interviews with them, this was six years after they'd been on The Biggest Loser, they were saying things like, I can only work out two hours a day. I don't have time to work out enough to keep this weight off. And it's like, oh no, like they, they've been indoctrinated into a worldview where you have to exercise, you know, 10 hours a day in order to keep weight off. It's like, oh, that's not very sustainable. So, and right. they were all, they sounded crazy with their food yeah. too, right? Like, like really just, you know, that food obsession, right? Like, you know, I start eating chips and mm -hmm. I can't stop and, 
you know, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, does that, does that ring a bell? Is that what you remember? Oh, does it ever? Yeah. Because really it's just the biggest, the same thing in life. 98% of people gain their weight back, but lose weight. And that's how it's been my whole life. Every time I've lost, I gained it back. But I kept it off pretty well for the first year. And as soon as I added sugar and flour back into my diet, I was on that slippery slope again. It was like being on that merry-go-round, you can't get off and, and the pounds just kept coming on and I, and I do everything to try to stop and, and I just couldn't. Yeah. And um, it, was, it was really rough. And I knew that, you know, what it does to your metabolism to lose and gain and lose and gain, and especially in the way that I did it. When I left the show, they told me, you have to exercise between two and four hours a day in order to keep this weight off. That's what I was told. That's what you were told. Wow. Yeah, that's there, what I was told. There's some questions for you in the comments. Angela Carey uh, Cutney says, question for Denny, how did the biggest loser, the weight loss food and the exercise plan impact your metabolism long-term? Have you noticed a, a, something in your metabolism? Well, what I've noticed, actually, <laughs> having done bright line eating, the weight came off just as easily as, yeah. as it, it and with no exercise whatsoever. So mm -hmm. I tell people, you know, it's 90% diet, maybe yeah. 10%. It's good to exercise, but like you say, put your bunny slippers on and just don't push it. Don't push it and you'll be fine. Yeah. You know, it, it's true. It's so true. Are you it's exactly right. no, You look great. <laughs> you know, I, I struggle with my bright lines. I, I, you know, but I have been in a happy, bright body. I yeah. loved your vlog, by the way, loved it. And I loved your vlog the week before where you talk about, you know, how come some people can hold those bright lines without any problem and others can't. And I do think it has to do with, you know, your childhood, your life, your, your, your personality, the different things that, you know, we have that make us individuals. And I, I do struggle with bright lines. But when I'm good, I'm good. And so it's, 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 the, it's the resuming as quick as you can. That is so important. And realizing that we are only, what do you say, two feet from the edge? <laughs> Just, yeah. It's, no matter how far down the road you are, you're always still two feet from the ditch. And no matter how long you've been in the ditch, you're always still just two feet from the road. So at any given moment, so, you're within two feet of the ditch or the road, like both, right? At any given yeah. moment. It's true. It's yeah. a one day at a time thing. Totally. And I've always always been an emotional eater and that's and that's what I'm trying to break that habit you know that you go to the refrigerator when everything when your world is falling apart yeah so um I am I I've kept this weight off for two years but the exciting part for me is how um how I found you and because I've been on two well three missions now I, w I went to Mongolia for um two years and in Mongolia it was an amazing experience wonderful people you discover that people are the same all over the world Mm -hmm. And um, so in Mongolia, my weight was about 200. I did this six sisters diet. You know, I went down to about 275, 280, you know, and then back up again by the time I left. And, you know, the same old pattern that I've done all my life. And um, then my mis next mission, I was up to about 230 and just miserable. Um, when I started, it was in Ghana, Africa. Love Africa. Wonderful people there. And... Um, so I'm, I'm there and I'm just praying, you know, please help me to lose this weight. And I thought I have 18 months on this mission. If I lose, you know, a certain amount of weight, I could be down to where I wanted to be. My, my, what I thought my goal weight was at the time was about 150. And so I thought I could do this, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. And so I was listening to, um, I had listened, I think before to um, the food revolution because I'm always interested, I've always been interested in eating healthy and eating the right way. And so I was listening to the, uh, I had gotten a thing on my email for it and I put it on and this amazing woman came on <laughs> who started talking about Bright Line Eating and oh my gosh, changed my life. I got chills. I felt so, I mean, I just knew, I knew that this was what I needed. I, it was like, where have you been all my life? Why didn't I find you sooner? <laughs> So um, I, I immediately downloaded the, or got the book on, on uh, Audible and listened. And I called my kids and I said, you've got to listen to this. This is the answer. This is the answer we have been looking for. And um, I did the 14-day challenge. And in five months, I was down 55 pounds, mm -hmm. um, headed to my bright body. And um, it was just, it was just incredible. 
Um, so I, I mean, I tell everyone, I've tried to reach out, I reach out to Biggest Losers. I, you know, they, a lot of them have decided keto's the way, a lot of them are just struggling and, mm. and especially in my season, but you know, I tell everyone um, mm. about Bright Line Eating because truly, I mean, I have never been able to keep my weight off for over two years and it's been over two years now for the first time in my life. Wow. So it's just, um, what a blessing. What a blessing this has been. What a blessing you have been to thousands of people that feel the same way I do, that found, finally has found a way to really um, heal from food addiction. I, I, didn't, I didn't really realize there was a thing as, that it was real, but it is absolutely a disease. And, and uh, this, is, this is a cure. This is an answer. And so you were so, in Ghana. You were in Ghana. I was Ghana. in Ghana. Yes. Yeah looking to try to lose weight over your 18 months of being a missionary there. Yeah. And you ended up listening to the food revolution summit and you heard my interview. That's so yeah. cool. I'll tell, I'll tell I, you. I thought I did have a picture of the before when I got to Ghana and after and mm -hmm. um, nice. What, what a difference. What a difference it made. Well, in my Laura Krug says, Denny looks beautiful, mother of eight and grandmother of 12. It's actually, I think grandmother of 24, Laura. 24, uh, <laughs> 24 uh, grandkids. She says, you are so youthful. How do you feel? I feel just as youthful. <laughs> I mean, I feel so good to be able to run. Last year, I spent another mission in a girl's camp. I was on uh, the challenge course, and I had to climb a net, a cargo net every day, sometimes a pole, but this, on my, on my course, it was a net, and you go across a, a wiggly ladder thing, then you sit on a two, two foot by two foot perch. I don't know if it was that. I think maybe it was a one and a half. And then I would hook these girls onto the zip line Ooh. and um, to build their confidence. Yeah. And then of course at the end I had to get down. So I would just zip down. Oh, it was so much fun. It's in the mountains and I hiked every single day for miles and miles and miles. And um, to be able to do that is just at my age, you know, I'll be 69 this year in October. And, uh, and I can do these things now. I can do You're these things 70? when I was no, I'll what? be 70 next no. year. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. So, so wow. it's just, uh, it's just been quite a journey to finally get to where I am. And, um, and I just, I'm, so I'm just so grateful. I'm grateful for you doing what you've done. And it's just been such a blessing in my life. So mm. like it can say, it's just been, it's been so good. And where, sorry. <laughs> All right, you saw that, and there's, there's a bunch of people who actually saw you on The Biggest Loser. So Brian Boyd said, <laughs> I was your biggest fan, Denny. Welcome home. Um, oh, thank Jay you so much. Schaap says, I saw you on The Biggest Loser with your daughter, one of my favorite seasons. Thank you for sharing your story. I was so excited for you when you won. So sweet. Uh, Lori Lay says, wow, 24 grandkids. <laughs> 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 Wendy Klinger says, hi, Denny. I, too, am excited to hear your story. Um, Luann Spooner Long says, yay, I first got the book at Denny's recommendation. Hi from Colorado. Oh, I tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Peggy Hatchmore says, I watched you on The Biggest Loser. Kathleen Edwards wow. says, this is exciting. Uh, Lori Ann Cantatori says, welcome. You are an inspiration. All right, and then we still have, we have more questions. Lori Ann Cantatori says, when did the switch flip that you realized it wasn't doing a diet, but a complete mind change? Um, I, I, well, it, it was after I read your book. I mean, it, it's, it's, that's what switched, that's what changed everything for me. I mean, for the, I'm reading this going, oh my gosh, this makes sense. This is, it's, it's not my fault. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've been beating myself up for years because I couldn't be in control. And I finally realized it's an addiction and I need help. And like you say, you know, the closer you, you are to the mothership, the better, because that's, yeah. you know, it's doing, it's doing the things that it's making your phone calls. It's, it's doing your checklist. It's doing all of those things that make such a difference. And yeah. before I was just floundering for all those years and really feeling like I'm going to go crazy someday. I can't get off this merry-go-round. I'm going to go crazy. Yeah. And then to hear you say, and so many people say the same things. And I felt like I'm, I wasn't alone. It was so good. It was just 
it's, it's just been a blessing. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and biggest Nancy, loser wasn't the ticket. <laughs> so Nancy Grissel has a question related to that. She asks, did the biggest loser provide any support or suggest a 12 step program or anything? Um, we had a psychologist. He was very nice. Um, you know, he came when you, we got kicked off the show. He came and talked about his car. <laughs> I, I, he's a very nice man. But um, no, um, as far as, and also people think that they put us on a diet. They don't. And luckily, I knew enough about nutrition that I was consistently losing weight. But on the, on the show, there were people that w didn't lose any weight because they, they have a kitchen full of anything except no, no sugar, no flour items. Well, there was some kind of healthy breads, but, um, but you chose how to eat. Everybody could eat what, whatever was there, but they chose for themselves. There was a nutritionist that took us shopping, um, but it was nothing that I didn't already know. I mean, I knew all there was to know, not all there was. I knew a lot about nutrition. I never, there's never, you always discovering more, but, but I knew how to lose weight and some of them didn't. And so they take this healthy food and they'd eat, you know, make these huge sandwiches and wondered why they weren't losing weight. It was because they didn't. Yeah. Interesting. So, okay. So the biggest there, basically provided um, round the clock exercise, essentially. That was it like was that. basically, yeah. And, and seriously, we were at midnight because of the shooting schedule. A lot of times we were walking the mile, which this mile that went around the ranch uh, at midnight to get our calories in. So there was a lot of times in the dark. Exercise calories. Yeah. You were aiming for what? Exercise. Say 5,000 calories. Of exercise. exercise. Some up to 5,000. I, I never, I, I just never went crazy, crazy. Um, but I did exercise sometimes eight hours a day on that show. Eight hours a day. Wow. So that was real. And, and the pain you see in the throwing up, that is real. I was lucky to be on the season with two new trainers. So, um, and they were excited to be with us. They were with us 24 seven um, because they were from out of state. And so they, we lived at the Biggest Loose Resort in Malibu because we were the, we were the, what do they call, secret team or whatever. The, um, uh, and they were, they were really good. They were really good trainers. They were with us. Uh, they knew a lot about nutrition as well. Um, and, you know, like if I couldn't do something, they, they'd just smile and say, okay, do your best, you know, instead of, instead of, instead of, you know, you're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but then we did get switched to, to Bob and Jillian's team, which was terrifying. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but we survived. I mean, luckily, but I really did start to get anxieties, really severe anxiety there at the ranch because I just, you know, every ex every time I would go into that gym, it was, it was anxiety for me. Wow. So that's not the way to lose weight. It really isn't. Monica Dean wants to know, have the biggest losers contacted you about your best size body and how you got to where you are now? Surprisingly, no. And that's so funny. And uh, I, yeah, surprisingly, because, because, you know, because so many of them have gained and I've reached out and sent messages and you've got to read this book and I haven't heard anything, hmm. which is pretty sad. I mean, I, I hope they do. I hope they can. I hope they can find it because it is an addiction. But they're out there at the gym again, trying to do the gym thing. And I'm like, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. I just, all I can do is reach out and say, hey, if you want to know how to keep your weight off, contact me or read this. I've said, read this book, read this book. Um, mm -hmm. I put it on, we have a Facebook page, alumni Facebook page, and I put it on there. Please, you know, just read the book. Yeah. So, all I can do I would tell my it's so fun when I was up at the at the um, camp last year uh, so many women uh, in our church are, are overweight you know we don't smoke we don't drink we eat <laughs> we eat and it's yeah. a it's a cultural thing yeah and, there's a question related to that Luann Spooner Long says Denny so much of church life is geared toward food I'm doing well over a year now but how do you navigate our church culture and bright line eating it's, it's difficult because we go up there. I mean, it was all about food up there and potlucks and it, it was just really hard. Um, I would just make my lunches and take them. I would uh, take what, my food to the potlucks. Um, it, you just have to really be prepared because if you're not, that's when you, that's when you, 
start yeah. slipping. So it, um, it, you just have to do that. And but I really, it's been fun to be able to share it with so many people. Even on that perch, I'd get people up there. I'd have a captive audience, yeah. and they were just really big people. And I was so proud of them for getting all the way up there. And I'd say, Hey, I have a book for you to read. Oh, I, I do want to tell. When I was in Ghana. Um, the, another woman came and another senior couple came and they were newlyweds. She was a lot younger than he was, but she was, she had to be at least 300 pounds plus. And, um, I could, t I just, I thought, I kept thinking, feeling very strongly. You need to talk to this woman. You need to talk to this woman. What am I going to do? You know, now I'm back to m m way closer to my, my bright body. And, um, and I thought, okay, I've got to talk to her. I've got to figure out how do I, how do I talk to her? And we were together uh, one day and, um, and I, I just, that feeling, you've got to talk to this person. I went up to her and I said, Hey, you know, I, I, want, I, I was on the biggest loser because that's always an in <laughs> yeah. and I lost a lot of weight and I know how hard it is to be overweight. And I've got to share something with you. She started to just sob and she said, Last night, I, cr I stayed up half the night crying. And my husband and I saying, what am I going to do? I'm the heaviest person here. We went out to dinner and they got me a special chair. And I'm so embarrassed and I don't know what to do. Yeah. And, um, and, she and then I walk up and say, hey, I've got something for you. They told her about the book. She got it. She downloaded it. She read it. She did the 14-day challenge. Then she did the boot camp. She lost well over 100 pounds while she was in Ghana. Wow. Just it was so neat. And even my, my heavy African friends, they'd say, what are you doing? How are you doing this? I have a book. <laughs> wow. So, so wow. what a blessing it's been. Yeah. So I've told a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people <laughs> about this book. Beautiful. I love it. Um, super sweet. I poured my heart into that book. So I just love that it, it well, I know. Beautiful. And yeah, what what a blessing, Susan. You followed you followed that feeling inside you, and that's the greatest thing in the world when you know you've done something that is is. Yeah. I think it's God related. I mean, He sent you for this purpose, yeah. and it's where your life's journey has taken. It's just awesome, and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing what you've done. You're so. welcome, sweetheart. You know what today is for me. <laughs> Today is 17 years since I started eating this way. It's my anniversary oh today. Oh my gosh, yeah. congratulations, 17 years. Well, I hope I have 17 left <laughs> to go on this, but, but hopefully I will. <laughs> that totally. is fantastic. Totally. Shauna Keel Merck says, wow, Denny, what an amazing story. Do you identify now as someone that can't do moderation with flour and sugar? Uh, no. Yeah, yes, I, I, I can't. Um, believe me, uh, I, 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 have, I keep thinking, I can just have this one bite, and I take that one bite, and I'm crazy. I'm just absolutely crazy, and I, I, keep, try, I keep learning the same lesson over and over, and so I'm you know, <laughs> getting to the point where this is crazy. Yeah. So I, I just know I can't. Yeah. Lori Faith wants to know more about your Brightline eating journey. She says, have you just read the Brightline eating book or have you done the boot camp or other Brightline eating programs? Are you a bright light? <laughs> What's been your journey since you came into Brightline eating? Okay. So, um, I, this, uh, this is all truthful. I, 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 I did the, I read the book, I did the 14 day challenge. Um, we are on a fixed income. So I thought, well, I can do this without. And then I, 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 when I came home and I'm from Africa, I immediately gained 10 pounds. I thought I, I got to do something. So I did, I did join a 12 step program that you're quite familiar with Susan and um, <laughs> struggled with many things in the program. Um, and uh, the 90 day thing, the, um, the, the corrupt, what I, what I call um, the diet, it depends on the sponsor, the sponsor, the sponsor above them. And I was told I could have mustard. I was told I can have all the diet soda I want, but I couldn't eat. Um, uh, I couldn't have mushrooms. I couldn't have avocado. So, you know, and, and so I go to another sponsor and I'd always tell them, well, I, I just want to do 
bright light eating and I'd, I'd get up and say bright light eating is why I'm here. I shared a lot of, with a lot of people in that program about bright light eating. Uh, I tell everybody, you've got to read the book. It doesn't matter what program you read this book. Um, and so finally, um, anyway, so I'm just working. I just finished the boot camp. I haven't quite finished it yet. And you're right. It's listening to this, to these videos is so important. And I've just, I've just recommitted and, um, I'm so glad I'm where I am. I'm so grateful. Nice. So, so you're just getting yeah. out of the boot camp now. You're toward the end of the boot camp. I'm just at the end of the boot camp. Uh, we've had some struggles in our family lately and, so it's been a little difficult. Um, so I'm excited to just keep on going and listen, listen, listen. So yeah. I'm excited for the future. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Um, Sarah Beth says, I've noticed a trend that most maintainers eat pretty similarly every day. Is this true for you? Absolutely. The, the more the simple, more simple I keep it, if I try to go with these concoctions I get myself in trouble so I do think it's the simplest I eat basically the same breakfast every morning um, and I love it I love it uh, so I do I do agree with you Susan the more simple the better so yeah. yeah I can I can eat the same things every day and not have a problem with it so, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll make a, a something and I'll like I do tofu and and put it over tofu and marinara and put it over um, those uh, zucchini noodles or spaghetti squash and I'll make enough for three or four meals and then I'll eat that for you know three or four days yeah. in a row no problem beautiful yeah. okay people have a bunch of comments for you Denny so here we go <laughs> rapid fire Sarah Beth says I'm 28 and your life path of travels kindness and maintaining your weight is so inspiring to me that I can live a similar life thankful to listen to your story today you look so peaceful and beautiful <laughs> Thank you. Kelly Lean Allen says, 69. Wow. I just got the book yesterday <laughs> in the mail. I can't wait to read it. Kelly Gear Carlson says, you look amazing. Losing weight brings a youthful glow and makes people look 10 years younger. Emma Lynn says, oh my, I thought you were in your 40s. Terry, Terry Lake Sarban Nepper says, 69. Daddy looks beyond fabulous. <laughs> New pendant. Do you have good genes like that? No wrinkle gene. <laughs> Gail Sanderson <laughs> says, so good to hear older women can get into a bright body. I will be 73 next January. Thanks, Denny, for sharing your story. Debbie Madison oh. says, wow, almost 70. No way. You look 30 and you're a bundle of energy. I want what you have. And Lauren Hill Rojas says, love you, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> and this has blessed us all. Oh, so sweet. Is that oh. your daughter, Lauren Hill Rojas? That's my daughter. That's oh. my daughter. So sweet. Yeah. So sweet. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I wish I had all their before and after pictures. So my daughter that was on the show with me, um, Sarah, she, um, her, she had a lot of fertility problems. And anyway, as soon as the show was over, she just went right back up and gained an extra 10 pounds from my, her Bright Light Eating, or from her um, Biggest Loser weigh in. And, um, and just struggled for years after. And now she's down, she's, she just did in vitro. She has a little baby boy, he's eight weeks old and she looks fantastic. She can fit into her finale dress. Um, she's Aww. just doing so, so well. And uh, I'm just, I'm, I this can't be more grateful. The that you did the biggest loser with, that's what you're talking the about. The one I did the biggest loser with. Doing uh -huh. That's Sarah. With, and she's all the way down, that's so sweet. And then my Lauren, she, she struggled with weight since she was little. Um, she was born with too much insulin. She was almost a 10 pound baby with, was born with too much insulin, was never a couch potato, but just struggled from the time she was little with food addiction. And uh, yeah, so she's doing really well. Sweet. So, yeah, sweet, it's, sweet. Been, it's been a journey for all of us. It really has. Mm. Is your husband supportive of Bright Line Eating? He's very supportive. I'm a little put, I keep trying to push him into it. He's got about 40 pounds, 30, 40 pounds he should lose. And uh, he's just not ready. So I just, can I invite trying. him? Can <laughs> I invite him to stop supporting. trying? What was that? Can I invite you to stop trying to push him to do it? I, exactly. I keep <laughs> trying to stop trying. And I know that that's what I need to, I even tell him, I know I'm not, I know I'm not supposed to say anything. I'm not supposed to just no. not push you. <laughs> Keep your I eyes do. on your own plate, girlfriend. Keep your eyes on your own plate. 
that you know, it's so I'm funny. I'm extremely codependent. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fix you. <laughs> Can't uh, do it. <laughs> no, no, especially with family, especially with family. It's like, yeah, yeah so got it. Oh, it's hard though. It's hard to watch our loved ones it's struggle. It's so hard. It is. It, it is. We're so much better when we keep our eyes on our own plate. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I wish I could, I wish you could see the picture or you, you had the picture when I first went to Ghana. I do look like about 10 years, at least 10, 20 years older than I do now. Mm. It's such a difference. I think Sans has that picture. I think I sent it to her in a text. Well, she can post it then. She can post it in the comments. Have her post it. Yeah. Because okay. the difference is just, it's just amazing. I mean, <laughs> old and young. Weight does make such a difference. And that's what really got me when I read your book is so many people my age were losing weight. They didn't yeah. think they could. Right. Yeah, we have data on that, Denny. So, um, and I, there's even science behind why Bright Line Eating does so well, especially with older women um, who mm -hmm. have not been able to lose weight in other ways. Um, our data show that uh, in the boot camp, um, women at every decile, so in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, lose weight equivalently in the boot camp. And, and that's really contrary to what um, you, know, you see out there usually. Usually women who are perimenopausal or postmenopausal don't lose weight the way a younger woman would. Yeah. And the reason is estrogen. So that's the big difference in a woman's body, um, premenopause, or postmenopause is estrogen, right? Estrogen is pretty high in youth, and then it tanks after menopause. Um, in perimenopause, it's up and down, up and down, and then postmenopause, it just goes really low and just stays low after that. Well, estrogen mm -hmm. has a lot of functions, but one of the things it does is it helps insulin work. So when you're eating sugar and flour and you're younger, you can often get away with it, quote unquote, get away with it, because you've got this estrogen helping the insulin to grab that extra refined carbohydrate out of the bloodstream, to shove it into the cells for metabolism to do their work. And once estrogen stops facilitating insulin to do its job, that doesn't work so well anymore. And suddenly any sugar and flour that you're eating is causing metabolic damage after middle age um, in bright line eating because we do away with sugar and flour entirely um, we level the playing fields between older and younger women and older women lose weight equivalently on bright line eating as younger women. So um, yeah, it's, oh. it, that's, that's the reason for that phenomenon, why bright line eating is working um, no matter the age. We've got five or six more questions for you and some of them are really great. Um, Katie B. Crab says, how important are the phone calls you make? Do you call the same people every day in bright line eating? What do you do? I have my favorites that I like to call, but they, they really, I, I really, um, uh, what is the word? Um, isolate. I'm an isolator mm -hmm. and the phone calls have been the hardest thing for me to make phone calls. Um, but yeah, they do make a big difference. And especially, you know, when you're struggling, it helps to have someone that can understand what you're talking about and feeling and what you're going through. So definitely phone calls are so, so important. Absolutely. Yeah. Every day, at least three. <laughs> Bridget Cannon says, did saying I'm a food addict help you? It seems I'm saying that to myself a lot and it's giving me some peace. Do you identify um, as a food addict? Do you say that to yourself? I absolutely do. Um, but I, I think, I know for like for my kids, especially one of my daughters, or two of my daughters, it's been really hard to accept the fact that they're a food addict and they keep trying to prove that they're not, but then they find out that they are, you know, because of the craziness. And, and yet the idea, you know, the idea of, well, if you tell yourself you're a food addict, um, you know, there's a struggle with, you know, well, I like, I like that I'm a recovering food addict. I'm a recovering food addict or, you know, I'm a child of God and I'm a, a recovering food addict. Mm. So, because I am, I mean, I'm in recovery uh, and that's important to realize that this is what, you know, I have the struggle, but I'm recovering. And so, yeah, yeah I think that's where I am. With For that. me, I, I like the identity of an addict because it just helps explain how my brain works. Like it just explains a lot of the wonky things that I have been dealing with. Right. Like, um, yeah. I don't know, like maybe someone who's had dyslexia their whole life and they, you know, they've had certain struggles in school and they've had a hard time with 
certain kinds of instruction or certain kinds of activities. And then they learn they're dyslexic because it's like, oh, you're not dumb. You're not, you know, um, you know, a slow learner. Your brain works differently with these kinds of situations or these kinds of problems. Like, oh, that's helpful. And then, you know, it's like that diagnosis mm -hmm. explains a lot. That's how I feel about it. It's like I readily embrace the label of a food addict because it explains how my experience with food is so different than so many of the people around me, right? Like um, I've tried so hard to make certain, to make my food experience and my weight experience look like what other people are experiencing. And it just doesn't, it's not, it's not the same. I have a very different experience. So for me, it just has explanatory power and it gives me, um, it gives me back control over, cause I'm powerless over being a food addict, but I'm not powerless over my recovery. I'm, I'm, I have total agency over taking the steps, um, to, uh, live free from the symptoms of that condition. So for me, it just feels empowering. Like if I deny that I have that condition, you know, then I just am stuck with the symptoms and I'm not treating it. I'm not treating it effectively. So that's kind of how I think of it. I love that. I love that. That, that. that makes perfect sense to me. I think that I was, or I am ADD because mm -hmm. I have a really hard time concentrating and I had, I had a really hard time in school um, for a, a number of reasons. And it wasn't until um, I had a teacher in sixth grade that told my mom, well, why does she struggle so much? mostly family, I think, and home life, but uh, she's got an IQ of 136. I don't know how they could tell at that age, but that's what he said. And um, it wasn't until I graduated high school and went to college that I realized I wasn't stupid. Yeah. And, um, and yet that's, that label, yeah, if I have ADD, you have ADD. If you have something, you know, if I have diabetes, I have diabetes, type 1 diabetes, say, you know, you don't say, no, I don't have it. You do. And so that makes perfect sense to me. I am a food addict. There's yeah. no question in my mind. I'm a 10 plus plus. Mm. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Me too. Lori Faith says, I have a question for Denny. Um, uh, Denny, when you gained weight back after The Biggest Loser, did you find you were embarrassed to join in activities and be with people? And if so, how did you overcome this? It, it was very hard, especially when I spoke. I mean, I used to do um, motivational speaking about losing weight. And, um, and so, yeah, it was really, it, it was hard. It's embarrassing to gain your weight back when you've been on national television and you had this gift given. And, and I, you know, I know my daughter, Sarah, really struggled, especially when she got called out by people. You know, what do you mean? You've gained your weight back. How could you do this? You know, just really when she decided to go back to the gym she had a girl call her out and she said it was just, it was devastating. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's really, it's hard. And yet, you know, I didn't let it stop me. Didn't let it stop me from doing the things that I knew, like going on my missions to Mongolia and Africa. It was, um, it was something that I knew that I needed to do. And it was a, it was a great experience for me to realize, you know, we are who we are, no matter what our weight is. And people yeah. don't love us any less because we're heavy or, or, or because we're thin. And that, that came, that was a, a good learning experience for me. You know, they, a lot of people just love who we are, not for what we look like. So that was important yeah. for me to learn. Sweet. And, Mary learn, and live for the day. Today is important. Today I'm learning how to live just one day at a time. All I have is today. I don't have tomorrow. Yesterday's gone. I have today. So that's been another good lesson for me. Beautiful, Mary. I mean, be beautiful, Denny. Mary has a question for you. I'm okay. looking at the sheet here. Mary has a question for you. Have you had a major relapse during your Bright Line Eating journey and had to recommit? Um, I've, had, I've had relapses along the way. Uh, I, I'll go seven months and be just bright as can be. I've done that and then had a relapse. And it's taken... Um, Sometimes I can resume the next day and I'm back on and sometimes it's a week and then I realize, okay, I'm really, I'm really struggling with something here. You know, let's look at it, what's going on. Um, and yeah, so I still struggle. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm working on keeping them bright, but this is my, this is my journey and I have to, I have to learn to love and accept myself the way I am because 
so much of me wants to be perfect and I'm not, I'm just not. So yeah. And we've had some hard times this last month. It's been hard. It's been a struggle. So, yeah. but, but I, I know, you know, it's, it's, it's about never quitting. It's about never giving up no matter what. And, and that's the most important thing. Just don't give up. I, I was talking to someone that gave up somebody, something happened to them. They gave up for eight years and then they realized this is the only way, you know, and came back, but somebody, they got their feelings hurt and they left for eight years. So, it, you know, they, you know, I don't, I don't ever want to do that. I'm never going to go that far. One, yeah. one, one day is bad enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More questions. Debbie Lonergan says, do Biggest Loser contestants get paid for their participation? We get, a, yes, we do. It's not a lot of money, but we get paid because you leave your job. You leave your, your family for a long time. Um, I was there for me and I was only there not that long, but I was there from October until December. So three months, some of them are there for six, five, six months. And so, yeah, they do get paid, but it's, it's, you know, it's not a lot, a lot of money. Yeah, definitely not a lot. <laughs> so. Jay Neely wants to know more about your numbers. Denny, how tall are you? How tall is Denny? How much has she lost? Does she have a weight range for her bright body? Um, I am five, five and a half. My top weight was 270 about, um, when I went on the biggest loser, I was at one or 256, got down to 135 on the biggest loser. Oh no, I got down to one. I was actually lower <laughs> little secret on the, or a little thing they do on the biggest loser. Um, you have to, before you weigh in, you have to do a, a, a urine test to make sure you're not dehydrated. And um, the last, the finale where I weighed 131, I have shy kidneys. And because some people had cheated on my season, they made you go with the door open. And I just couldn't, I couldn't. So I kept drinking water and, did, and even drank Gatorade to try to get myself to go. And so I finally, they finally sent me to where I could be alone. And then I went, I, I knew I wasn't dehydrated, but anyway, so. I definitely wasn't. So I know though I think probably my lowest weight was about 128 and I had about five, they said four to six pounds of, of hangy skin on top yeah. of that. So that was very, very, very way not a happy place for me. Um, I immediately went up to 140, that will between one, I would fluctuate between 140 and 160. All last summer, that's where I stayed and I was so happy there. It was just for me, that was a, a really happy weight. Um, right now, I'm up a little bit from that. <laughs> and, and because of the emotional stuff that I've been going through this, this last month, um, actually two months, has been really tough for us in our family right now. So, um, so I'm, I, I, I've been between 150 and 160 fluctuating. So, so. I, I still feel really good. I'm still wearing my size eight jeans. They're just a little bit tighter and I would prefer to be my, I think my brightest place is around between 140 and 145, 150. That's, that's where I am. Thanks, Denny. Thanks. Thanks for sharing your numbers with us. Let's see, just a couple more questions here. Um, Donna Morales says, Denny, I love your enthusiasm and joy. Do you have more peace and joy since your Brightline eating journey? Absolutely. Oh, a hundred percent. Yes. Much more joy, much more peace. It just, you know, sometimes I'll walk down the street and I'll catch a glimpse of myself and go, this is me. You know, I'm, I'm where I, I'm where I'm happy. I'm, I'm so happy where I am. And, and even, even right, you know, even if I'm 10 pounds over where I think I should be, I'm still very happy where I am, but I, yeah, it's a journey. <laughs> it's a journey and it, it won't stop until, I get to go home <laughs> on the other side of the veil. <laughs> Lori Faith says, Denny, did you have surgery for loose skin? If so, what was your experience? And if not, might you? Um, I did not have surgery for my like arms, you know, no, because I'm, I can cover that up with clothes and it's surgery is very, very difficult. I did have surgery on my face. So if you think that, look, and that was because I, I just really had so much skin. In fact, the surgeon that did, did my face said, 
he, he just took a video of it. He said, I can't believe how much extra skin you have on your face. I mean, it was, it was a lot, a lot, a lot. And every time I look in the mirror, I just cringe. And so I don't cringe anymore. And so I'm happy that I did it. So Beautiful. that's where I am. Beautiful. And it's still, I mean, I didn't do my eyes and I didn't, you know, and it's still, I'm still jowly. I'm still, it's still there. It's just not as bad as it was. Yeah. You don't look pull too tight. You know that, like, you don't want that. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. I said, don't make me look like a skinned rabbit. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> you know, no, totally. I think it did it very nicely. It's a very beautiful job. Beautiful job. Lisa wants to know, do you rely on a scale much or do you go by how your clothes fit or what? Uh, I think I have an addiction to the scale too much, so I need to put it away um, and, um, and just weigh, you know, once a month for right now is what I'm determining to do. Sometimes I'll sneak it out and go, ah, oh, I'm just going to put it away <laughs> and do what I need to do. Um, scales can, can be really tricky because you can weigh one thing one day. It just depends on your body and what you're, what, yeah. you know, what going on. So it's not really a true weight. And so I try to stay away from the scale. Nice. Um, Cora Lee Hill Shearer says, has Brightline now taken the fear out of regaining weight for you? Um, pretty much because I, having, well, the, like, like, like we just talked about being two feet away from the ditch. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I know how dangerous that, that breaking the lines and, and staying broken is. And so I think it's really, really important that resume is so important. And so I, I think just being aware that um, you're, you're always next to that, next to that ditch. So just watch it. Keep, keep your bright lines as bright as you possibly can. Mm. And keep them bright. Keep them bright. <laughs> it's mm. important. Oh, sweetheart, we're wrapping up. Do you have any final things you want to cover? Anything you think feel like we missed? Um, I'm, I don't think so. Not that I can think of. It's just, it's just how important it is to just live for today. And it's one day at a time. And if you blow one day, you have tomorrow. It's a clean slate and you can start over. Don't give up. Just don't give up. That's the most important thing. I think is not giving up. Beautiful. Okay, there's some closing comments for you. Um, Barbara Wiley says, I'm inspired by your journey. Thank you for sharing. I look forward to continuing my journey. Mandy Records says, so inspiring. Jeanne Ann Franson Kendall says, I love your joy. <laughs> um, Lisa Shower says, Denny, you are so inspiring. I'm 61, almost 62, and I've just felt it's over for me. But it's your smile and tranquil but happy appearance that are reinvigorating me. Thank you, girl. Oh, thank oh. you. And Marilyn thank you. Yeah, says, I'm Kathy, Kathy Whiting's sister. She told me about you, and now I'm at the <laughs> end of week three on Bright Line Eating. So grateful. Yay! It's spreading. Awesome. You're spreading this everywhere. It's amazing. Mary Lynch <laughs> says, the true beauty is in your bright eyes. And oh, Melinda says, you look beautiful and radiant. Thank you for sharing your story. Nancy Grizzle says, so, so, so glad to have heard this call. You both lifted me up to a new level of happy and bright. Um, and lots of congratulations were in the thread for me too on 17 years and such a sweet call. Denny, I'm so glad to finally meet you. I heard that you were in our community a while ago and um, yeah, really, really sweet to finally meet you. I just love your, uh, your attitude. You just have such a sunny, <laughs> sunny, positive um, perspective and it's just refreshing. It's just a breath of fresh air. I just adore you. I think you're just so delightful. Thank you. I adore you. I just, you truly, it's, you've just given me so much. I cannot thank you enough. So grateful to have been on this journey and to continue to be on the journey. It's just, it's just been such a blessing in my life and so many others. I love, love, love reading everybody's stories. I love, I mean, I am so inspired by all of you. I am so inspired by people that have just, just stuck to their bright lines and, and, or where they are. And even if we struggle, you know, we're just on the journey to stay on the journey. Yep. So yeah, I'm so, I'm so grateful to all of you. Arm in arm. 
So sweet. So I don't know if you know this, Denny, but we're going into a launch for Brightline Mind right now. And so I will be doing Facebook Lives every day for a little while. The next one's tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. And I'm going to start talking about the seven scientific secrets of staying happy in uncertain times. And I think this is going to be stuff you're going to love, Denny, because it's just right up your alley. You're, all, you're going through a time with your family right now. And, you know, just some more tools up our sleeve for, you know, uh, staying happy during certain kinds of times, right? It's so what we need. So just loving you, sweetheart. Thank you for joining me today. The link in the Thank comments, you. everyone, is to the Bright Line Eating Bootcamp, which Denny is in right now and just finishing up. Denny, I hope to see you in Bright Life first soon. And um, I just love you so much. What a doll you are. I so love you. Thank you so much. You are just giving us so much. Thank you. Mm. Thank bye, you. everyone. Thanks, Denny, again. And bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.